Good morning, you are back with the crew. Thanks for spending time with us. Uh, so cool, I got to meet a bunch of you at the at the last show I was at. Uh, some of you were just so gracious with your time, and I appreciate you all. Um, it was amazing. My son and I love meeting you. We're going to do meetups going forward uh, throughout the year, whatever. We're going to be at different shows, and uh, I'll let you guys all know. And whenever we travel to a location, we're going to try and get a hold of you guys and let you know where we're going to be. Because in person is incredible, and I love it. Uh, speaking of... Uh, uh, Point Guard XRP and his lovely wife uh, Rebecca. Uh, love you both. And we had a great time and thanks for spending so much quality time with us. We had a good time. Um, okay, so today's video I really want to talk about what's uh, a lot of question marks out there. I just I did a video about ETFs and I didn't talk about what they mean and what they're going to mean to the price action so much so that's what this is going to be about. I have, I have a, I have a strange channel because I have the, half my viewers love Bitcoin, half of them hate Bitcoin, half of them, or should say quarter and a quarter, and 25% of them love the XRP and 25% of them hate XRP. It's like this jumbled up mess of everybody's free to choose whatever coin you want. That's the beauty of this world in which we live in. That's why there's thousands of them. I like them all. I like. Uh, if it's a good project and they're uh, above board and honest, I'm down with it. I think crypto is changing the world, and that's probably why you're watching this show. Okay, as far as ETFs go, I really have to say this. There's a, I don't even know where I saw it, but it's out there and it's really cool. If you look, I was looking at a gold chart because it was at the Silver Symposium. If you look at a gold chart and you look at a 20, sorry, if you look previous to 2004, the very first spot ETF for gold was in 2004. All basically throughout history of ETFs, gold did nothing until there was an ETF for gold, a spot ETF for gold. Since that day, gold has gone basically parabolic on a linear chart, okay? It went, I believe, from, I th don't quote me, I think it was somewhere $150, $200 to what it is today, which is $2,000. So ten it's gone up tenfold, right, since 2004. And you say, well, okay, well, what's that got to do with ETFs of crypto? Well, let's stop and think about this. We're about to have a Bitcoin ETF, right? That Bitcoin ETF... In other words, the year in which we live in right now, if you can relate back in time, is the year 2003. You understand the correlation there? Where we're about to go, there's so many people, naysayers out there, trying to tell me that as soon as this ETF comes in, they're going to control the price of Bitcoin. Again, I don't want people to get lost on the word Bitcoin. I'm going to say crypto. The ETF for crypto is coming. This means that you and I are going to be part of a parabolic move over the next 20 years, which is probably going to be tenfold. Past performance is not future gain. I understand that. But what I'm trying to say is crypto spot ETFs are bigger than gold. They're bigger than wheat. They're bigger than pork bellies. Reason being is because they're still pulling gold out of the earth. They're still pulling, po growing pork bellies. They're still growing wheat. You don't know how much wheat's coming into the market. We know how many coins there are. Whatever coin they make an ETF out of, that crypto has a set number in almost all cases, okay? Now, when you have a set number said, I'm going to use Bitcoin in this manner. When that ETF starts and it takes off and it starts going, as a trader, I want you to really wrap your head around what I'm saying here. As a trader, I've traded most of my life in one way or another, many years of that Forex trading. When you know you have a set amount 
and you have to trade money for Bitcoin and physically you have to have the amount of Bitcoin that you sell for that amount of money. I'm asking you as a trader, where's your opportunity to short that market? There's only one. And the only time that would be of who of you to short a Bitcoin ETF, crypto ETF, if you will, that has gone parabolic. When it goes screaming up and it's 90% up over its previous price, you're going to look for some form of contraction or pullback. Those pullbacks are going to be short, brief opportunities in which you can take a short. How much confidence are you going to have in that short? Let's remember the riskiest trade in trading ever is a short. Because when you take a short, the upside is infinity. When you take a long, the upside is all the way to zero. You can't go past zero. So the riskiest trade in trading is a short, always has been. So with a crypto ETF, think about this. Why would you, why would you if you're BlackRock, and by the way, BlackRock is not going to be the first. This whole thing is setting up for Grayscale to be the first spot ETF. And if you looked or listened to my last video, which is probably going to be up here somewhere or two videos ago, that video showed you or explained to you the 10 biggest companies or players wallets in Bitcoin. Number two was Grayscale. Grayscale just won, didn't win the case yet, but they won their appeal with the judge. Coming up soon, I believe it's next week or the week after, they're going to have to come up, the SEC and Mr. Burns is going to have to come up with a reason as to why he's not allowing Grayscale to open its first ETF for Bitcoin. Well, it's very hoovy of Grayscale to open this because look how many Bitcoin they have. I think it was 200,000 Bitcoin they have. BlackRock doesn't have, I don't know, Black, BlackRock wasn't even on the chart. I mean, Russia holds more Bitcoin. Okay, China owns more Bitcoin than BlackRock. So BlackRock was trying to race to the beginning of that market, and they were trying to be the first. But because of that loss and that appeal, right, it looks to me like Grayscale could make it to, I'm going to call it, I don't know, I keep, asking Elizabeth and she's helping me as best as I can on the legal matters of this. She's really going to crank into that this weekend. We're going to look more into it. I keep thinking it's going to happen before the end of the year. I don't know why. I don't have any proof of that. I don't have any inside information on that. I just feel like it's going to happen. And when it does happen, I think your date will turn to 2004 if you understand the parallel there. It's going to start to make its parabolic climb over a decade or two. Now, I'm not talking just about Bitcoin here. I'm talking about all these ETFs are coming. Because if you watch my other videos, you know that they're trying not to allow these things to become bonds because that creeps way too close into sovereign money, which is not really what they're hoping you're going to get involved in crypto get involved in. They're really happy with it being a storage of wealth. They're really happy with that. They do not want these things becoming currencies. Okay. My opinion. So let's backtrack a little bit. What do we know about ETFs? Well, when they're spot ETFs, okay, which in other words, for the layman, for those of us who don't understand the difference between the two, and it's okay that you don't because you have a busy life. You don't need to know that. In other words, they can't print and say, oh, I have a trillion dollars. I'm going to short Bitcoin a trillion dollars. You can't buy a trillion dollar short, okay, unless you have the Bitcoin or unless you put the money on the barrel head and there's Bitcoin to short. You can't. 
if you want to buy a trillion dollars worth of it. In other words, you can't manipulate the market through fake money any longer. That's a spot, a true spot market means you take possession the moment you buy it. Just like a spot market is just like you going to the grocery store. You pay the money, you get the product. You get the product, you sell it to your neighbor, you get the money. If you don't have the money and you don't have the product, you don't get to transact. You don't get to say, oh, I'll pay you next Wednesday with fake digits. That's a game changer. You have to hold the silver. You have to hold the Bitcoin. You have to own it. And you can only sell what you own. You can't sell what you claim you own. Okay? This is big. When this happens, when this hits, all the big players are going to start jockeying for position. They're already jockeying. I just explained to you, Grayscale's ahead of the game over BlackRock. But uh, Fidelity has been mining Bitcoin since 2014. They admitted it. Okay, you're talking about Citadel. I know a little bit something about Citadel. They're involved. All of these massive financial institutions are involved with crypto and crypto ETFs. All these banking institutions are now calling crypto and cryptos collateralized. This is something that you and I know. <clears throat> Don't take that knowledge for granted. You know something that 99% of the face of this planet doesn't get or understand. In other words, the top 20 banking institutions in the world understand the meaning of XRP or Bitcoin. They know what it means to the world. The top 20 financial institutions are jockeying and bribing judges. I, did I say that? I didn't say bribe. I meant, you know, taking them golfing and stuff. They are after these people to get their foot in the door in this. Explain to me how that's going to fail when the top 20 banking institutions and financial, the top 20 financial institutions are already in or begging to get in and actually ha winning lawsuits and winning against Mr. Burns in court daily now, but yet it's all going to go to zero. It's all not going anywhere. They're going to manipulate the price. Don't worry about it, Alan. You, you bought nothing. You bought thin air. Those people don't, the institutions I just told you about, don't buy thin air. They own reality. They own the future. They own the product that you and I already hold. They are headed where we own. They're coming to our backyard. You're sitting in the right place possibly for the first time in your life. The, your future is insanely bright. Hang in there. Remember, patience is not only a virtue, it almost always pays massive dividends. All right, guys, if you would like further content like this that I can't talk about typically on YouTube, uh, there's other channels that you can reach me on. One of them is you can find me at uh, thestaplecrew.info. Come look me up over there, and I hope to see you guys soon. Love y'all. I'll be back real soon. Bye now. <laughs> well, made it through another video. No dogs kicking cameras, ripping microphones, barking at squirrels in the middle of the video. Yeah, yeah, it went pretty smooth. I think I'll keep this one. Yeah, yeah. I sounded really intelligent in this one. Yeah, if I don't mind saying so myself. Pretty smart. Nope. No, 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 I'm not. No. Pretty much just another guy. Yeah, that's who I am. And happy. I'm a happy guy. Happy to be me. Happy to be with you. And happy where we're all headed. 
Love you all.